Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. Today we're going to be looking at making a index or a list view for our posts that we made in our Rails application in the last episode. So we're going to throw a front end on it and it's going to be Markdown, of course, and that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, here's our end product here. A little bit of markdown that's displayed. It's expandable, classable. We also support images, of course, markdown images. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. Oh, real quick, first thing, I do have a Patreon if you want to go ahead and support content like this. And I also have a newsletter where I send out weekly information about episodes I've made that week, as well as other interesting technical things I may have found. I'd love to have your support. Okay, back to the episode here. So we have the DB here, and we're going to go ahead and create in Rails, Rails C, that's the console. We took the content from this guy's website. You can see that here. And this is what we're doing, just content, and then basically paste this whole section in, and then I run this code here, 28 times. I'm going to create, grab a sample user, so make sure you have some users already, and then run post create. So the title will always be this is test and then some number and the content and then a published at time within the last eight days. That's all it's going to do for right now. As you recall, we're just grabbing all of our posts, no order or anything right now in our Rails app. Over in package JS Son here, we're going to go ahead and add Snarkdown as well as Tailwind Line Clamp. So those are the two packages we'll be using. And then we've only really changed four files here. First is the Tailwind config where we're adding that line clamp as one of our new requirements here. And then the others are in our layout and our app. Go to app first. The first thing is um, within Svelte, I have not yet found a way to not purge markdown type uh, potential stuff. So I added some classes here for just a few things. Um, you can do a lot more styling, of course, within your Markdown. Um, and I'll show you how that's used in just a moment. But basically what I was coming against is this is automatically being stripped out and purged uh, for not being used. Um, but we don't know what is going to be used because that content is dynamically generated from the client. So those are just a few tags we definitely want to support just to make this look a little bit nicer on our front end. So you can see here we have some different sizing and everything like that. Um, a little bit extra spacing, some bold, etc. And then over in layout here, the only thing I really changed is I made this min h screen rather than h screen. Uh, as it's expandable all the way down, we want it to look the same blue. And then finally here in our index, this is where we're going to do all of the magic. So we're going to create a load function. So we are on Svelte Kit from now on, and we'll be playing in that realm. And this is going to take in the page and session. We really only need the, the session here. And we're going to have our URL is app v1 posts. That's where our URL is defined within our Rails application. The API endpoint is from our .env. Um, in fact, I need to cleared all my search results. So let me just show you that to you real quick. So I have Vite API import here. Local is 3000. My Rails server is running. And then port of 5000 for the Svelte Kit application and debug mode is on as well. If you re don't remember where those are being used, that's under source hooks index. So right now, really just the Vite API endpoint as well as the Vite debug. That's, those are now provided within the session. We have the API endpoint here. Let me make this just a little bit bigger for you guys. And right now, we're just going to go ahead and check if we have a response of 200, meaning we got everything back correctly. We're going to return the props, an object with props in it, and that's going to have posts of the JSOP data. Otherwise, we're just going to return an empty string for now. And you could help handle this different ways if you'd like, throwing an error, whatever. Um, but for now, we're just going to do this. So we're going to import Snarkdown. 
So Snarkdown is a library that uh, provides Markdown support. Snarkdown. You can see it here. Uh, I will make sure to post that in the show notes. And it's very small, which is one of the nice reasons we're using it. Um, I do believe I am changing that in the next episode because I needed a better... No, I actually ended up using it. I do end up going ahead, and in the next episode, I will add XSS, uh, cross-site, um, no, I just forgot the name, scripting attacks, uh, defense for the Snarkdown in the next episode. We're not going to do that quite yet, so don't call me out quite yet. We are going to do it. That for anymore. and socket. Okay, so I am using Tailwind UI here, so I'm not going to go into exact details of what each and every class is doing in terms of the CSS and making things look nice. Um, I will be doing some Tailwind episodes uh, at a later point, but for now this is going to focus strictly on the Svelte side of things. So you have a div here to throw this in the center, max width center, it's a small, small, and giving a little spacing. You have an unordered list here, and it's going to have a little bit of division, and it's going to have this like light gray. Here's our Svelte code. We're going to have each post. Uh, we're going to iterate through every single one. This is from the posts prop, which gets passed into the export let here. And so we're going to go iterate through each of these. As you recall, our objects look something like this. So you have ID, user ID, title, content, published, etc. So we're going to go ahead and have a list item here. And within that list item, we're going to have this span, not a tag, but this span. It's going to be hidden, so that way we can have this whole thing focused here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have click event. So on click, so this is felt code again. We're going to have an anonymous function in here. We're going to say when it's clicked, we're going to change the post.expand to being the opposite. So see what that does in just a second. And below we're going to say, hey, what user with user ID is. And we're going to say the title. So that's all within this first block here. Then over here, we're going to have a published at. And we're going to just show what that is. So these have published ats of null. This has a timestamp, et cetera. User number and what test it was. You see, I also manually added a few others outside of the automated ones. Next up, down here. We have a little bit of margin above, and then we're going to have a paragraph tag, and we're going to say if it's expanded, have no class here. Otherwise, use line clamp two, which is from that Tailwind library here, extension, plugin, okay. and that's going to make sure that this cuts off uh, nicely. That's what this does here. So line clamp two. Go ahead and. Look at that. The overflow hidden, and then WebKit line clamp. And so it just kind of shows two lines worth of information there. And then we also have this markdown class, which is non existent tailwind that I added, and that's going to be using the classes from here. So if we have any H1 tags within it, or H2, etc., within this markdown, they will be showing up properly. Finally, I have this post.expand, and if we have post expanded, we're going to show all of our content um, as HTML and then using Snarkdown on the content. Again, the content looks like this or this, etc. Otherwise, if we're not expanding it, 
we're going to have a substring of it. And then I chose an arbitrary 80 characters. And the reason I did that is because when you're tabbing through, see it's going to tab onto that link. So there's a links, and I'll make those look better later. But if I didn't do that, it would still tab through into these with the WebKit, WebKit line clamp on. And it looks horrendous. So we're just going to use a substring for now. That's an easy way to cut that off. So that's it for this episode. We're going to continue to improve this, make it look a lot nicer in the next Svelte episode. We'll make sure we can manually add new posts. We can edit them as long as we're allowed to and delete them as well. So if you liked it and subscribe, that would be fantastic. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.